let us begin. Last week, I had requested you for a detailed discussion on a topic, Palestine conflict, the religious and the historical status of this land. What is the real issue? Where do we Muslims stand with regard to it? How can we understand it? You had stated in great detail that God Almighty had chosen some nations and associated some specific regions with them. And after that, one nation was removed from this responsibility and another nation was chosen in its place. I would take the discussion further from that point. That is when the appointment of Ishmaelites had been made. The sphere of their influence was the Arabian Peninsula. There they had to fulfill this responsibility as a nation. After this, what happened so that Palestine was set aside? And on the other side, the companions started coming out of the Arabian Peninsula towards Palestine. And what was the reason for their egress? What happened there? after this and what does the history of the muslims tell us about the things that have been happening in this land this point was fully clear from the discussion that god almighty in a specific period had chosen palestine that this land would now be the center of my dawah the israelites would inhabit this land the prophethood would come to be specially associated with them from this land they would convey the message and the dawah of God to the people. I had said to you that the Quran has described its whole history. Previously, its details have been elaborated upon. Let us recapitulate once again some of the major points. When Prophet Abraham was sent towards his nation, he completed the proof of God to his nation. There, according to the laws pertaining to the charge of a messenger, the judgment of God was delivered unto them. When he did hijrah and came out from that land, he was handed over yet another mission. And it was also said at that moment that now, till judgment day, the religious leadership has been awarded to you. On that occasion, when this leadership was given, he asked, Wa min zuriati, that is, whether this affair would remain confined to my personality or my offspring are also a part of it. It was said, if they are oppressors, then they too would be suspended from this honor, otherwise they would be a part of it. All these points have been stated by the Quran itself, and along with it, it has clarified that the Israelites have been given this preference. It was the same position of being the witnesses, and they were designated for this position, and for a long time remained in this position. Approximately, it can be estimated that this was for a period of 1500 years. That is when the period of Prophet Jesus came. So if we take the period starting from the time of Moses, more or less the period of 1500 years had passed. When his last prophet completed the arguments of God on them, so I had said that on one end, the torment of God came upon their nation, and in the 70 CE, they were simply defeated and expelled from there and both the forms of torment which God Almighty has stated, that is, a nation be eradicated or placed under the torment of slavery and subordination. For them, this second form of torment had been chosen, since they weren't just the nation of a single prophet like the Ad and the Samud. Their own status was that they were the chosen nation of God. They had been appointed. God Almighty had chosen them for serving His religion. In this respect, Fadzal tukum alal alimin, that is, giving preference among all the nations of the world they had been chosen, so for that too there is a law governing it. And that law has been stated in great detail in the Torah. Even now, if you read the book of Deuteronomy, there are a lot of details about it. It has been explained there that now your affairs would be similar to what God Almighty does with prophets on an individual basis, that is, if you remain steadfast on truth, then God's help and guidance would be there. His patronage will manifest itself upon you, and worldly exaltations will be there. And if you will deviate, then you will be punished in the world itself. This was not the case for other nations. Therefore, the worldly punishments that were decreed for them has been stated in the Quran in this way, and I had mentioned it that now, till judgment day, the exact words are there. Jailulazi Natabuka, Fauka Lazina, Kafaru Ila Yaumil Kiyama. Since the final argument had been completed through Prophet Jesus, so it was stated 
that those people who would claim to be the followers of Prophet Jesus would have domination on them till the day of judgment day. And further clarification was done in Surah Ara'af that it will not just be this domination, rather occasionally, that is in a gap of a century or in another 50 years, there will be a regular whips of torment that will strike them. So these points were elucidated in principle by the Quran. With this, we learned that the erstwhile status of Palestine was over. And this too has been stated by the Quran. That is, it has said in Surah Baqarah after narrating this complete tale of theirs. Now the manner in which they had been designated for this position. Similarly, the words, O Ishmaelites, that is, the nation of the Prophet has been addressed, the companions have been addressed, that now it is you who have been designated for this position. Kazalika ja al nakum ummatan wasatan li tukunu shuhada ala rasul, rather, li tukunu shuhada ala nas wa yakuna rasulu alaykum shahida. This has been said. I had said that in Surah Hajj, it is made clear as to who has been bestowed with this responsibility. It is said, Milata abikum Ibrahim, and there too the same words have been used. It is your father, Abraham's religion, it is his dawah. This house was settled by him. This masjid a haram was made by him. You are the inheritor of that legacy. The last prophet has been appointed among you. The status of Palestine will now be yours till judgment day. So from the religious point of view. Now this status belongs to the Arabian Peninsula. Hence, it was stated in the Quran that after the completion of proof of the prophet, now this land will only allow God's religion. Yakuna din kuluhu lillah. And the Prophet elaborated this while stating, La yajtamehu fihi dinan. Now till the judgment day, in the Arabian Peninsula, this is the haram, it is the center of Tawhid, it is the house of God, it is Bayatullah, people will come here for Hajj and never will two religions gather here in this land. So with regard to religion, the matter is closed here, that is, the special status of Palestine, that is, the same quality, or the same sanctification has now been bestowed upon the Arabian Peninsula and the commands of God related to it are now connected with the Arabian Peninsula. And the results and consequences stated in the Quran will now be restricted to this peninsula only. If you look into the next aspect, then what is it? That aspect is that when through the Prophet the completion of proof took place in the Arabian Peninsula, then it did not remain confined to it only. That is the last prophet and the last messenger. In the capacity of the last messenger and the last prophet, now there isn't going to be any more prophet or messenger who will come from God, and the chain of propagating the religion which God Almighty started from the times of Adam, its termination has been declared. So the completion of proof of the prophet was not kept limited to one region or one nation, rather, Initially it was said, this race in which you have been appointed, that is the word Umul Qura, was used implying this city of Makkah. Appointment of the Prophet took place there only. Li Tunzira Umul Qura Waman Hawlaha. That is this Umul Qura, the mother city or the central settlement. This area and its vicinity should be the region for you to carry out Inzar. When this stage was completed, then it was said that now the rest of the people should be conveyed the same message. Hence, you see the first section of the Quran, the Surah Baqarah, Ali Imran, Nisa, Maida, their complete focus is towards Ali Kitab, the people of the book, the people of the book of the Arabian Peninsula. When the completion of arguments of God had taken place in the Arabian Peninsula and his decree had been implemented, and the justice of his court of justice had been pronounced. Then about four years earlier to this result, the prophet extended his dawah to the surrounding regions. About that you are aware that on one side was the Byzantine Empire and on the other side was the Sassanid Empire. Under them there were several rulers which you may call independent states. So the prophet wrote letters to about eight such rulers and then they were given the opportunity that the Prophet of God is in the world, the last Prophet of God. If someone wishes to meet, he is welcome. If someone wishes to discuss, may as well. Hence, when a Prophet gives dawah, 
a time interval is given. That too was given. And the help and patronage of God manifests necessarily with the prophet. And this becomes the means of completion of proof that too happened. And then the prophet indicated to the companions that this stage is now beginning. I would be leaving the world. However, that stage is starting in which these areas will come under you and those people who would deny God among them will be punished through you. The same punishment which was given to the people in the Arabian Peninsula. Those punishments have been stated by the Quran in Surah Tawbah. And it is said that those people who are Mujahir bil shirk, that is those people who declare shirk as their religion, those who say about shirk that it is the correct religion for them, capital punishment is decreed, and those people who are essentially followers of Tawheed, or those people who express their relationship with God and say that no, we believe in one God, Allah, accept Him as the one to be worshipped. He is our sole creator, and apparently do not find themselves involved in shirk, for them, even though they may be indulging in shirk. However, what exactly is their issue? They are misled by a wrong interpretation and thereafter committing shirk. For them, it is said that their punishment is of subordination. So the companions gave them the same punishment. That punishment has been stated in Surah Tawbah. Its words are, For them too, the war will be waged. Hata yutul jiziyata an yadin wahum sagirun to the point that they pay jizya and accept to live as conquered people in subordination. So for Palestine, there wasn't a separate step taken by them. Rather, it was the same step which had its manifestations in Palestine as well. So to whom was the letter written to in Palestine? It was under the Byzantine Empire. Their governors had taken up the responsibilities there. And we are aware that for a certain period, the Sassanids had also conquered it. This was the same occasion of which a mention in the Quran also takes place. Gulibatir Rum. It was a period of about 20 years in which the Sassanids were governing it. However, afterward, when the prophecy of the conquest of Rome came true and the Roman Empire struck back to power, so here too, their government was formed in different areas, the way was either to govern directly or to appoint a governors or agents for the purpose. In the same way, like among us, some sultans used to govern, so there used to be some states which would be like dependents of some king, or there would be subordinate ruler, or had some dominion status. So such types of arrangements for governance exist in the present also. Likewise, in those days too, they existed However, if you look at its essence, it was either the Byzantine Empire, which is also called the Roman Empire, and on the other side were the Sassanids. The Kaiser o Kisra, that is Caesar and Cyrus, are representatives of these two empires. Kaiser for the Romans and Kisra for the Persians, at the names of Heraclius, etc., which we know and the Dawa of the Prophet reached him, and you are aware of his conversation with Abu Sufyan, which has also been quoted in Bukhari. All these are referring to this, where the message of the Prophet reached him, his dawah reached him. The Prophet wrote letters, his messengers went to them. In this way, the last Prophet of God gave them dawah directly. They were given more or less a period of four years. They could come, meet and discuss. The Quran had been completed in the meantime. It was being publicized. This dawah too was reaching the surrounding regions and the manifestations of the aid and presence of God that happens with the prophets and becomes a means of completion of proof that too had happened in the land of Arabia. And then gradually it used to manifest itself with its glory. That is, companions used to attack and the help of God would come as God Almighty had promised to the prophet. In the same scenario, the conquest of Palestine happened too. The Muslims had laid siege in Palestine. There hadn't been any war. As a result of the laying of the siege by Abu Ubaidah, the religious leaders or the clergy had demanded that if your caliph comes to us, we shall hand over the keys. That is, with peace, its governance will be transferred. Out of that demand by them, 
Umar went there. To Palestine, there were several regions that conceded defeat and were ready for subordination. There were many regions that chose peace and were ready for being governed. You will find many such incidents in history. Here it so happened that their religious leadership demanded, obviously, there were Christians, and Umar went there as a consequence of their demand, post which the keys of the city were handed over to him. In this way, Palestine was also included in the list of conquests by Muslims. That is, the Muslims out of their conquests had established a great sultanate and in a period of few years. And they established it as per the prophecy of the Prophet. They demonstrated that law of Allah, which has been stated in the Quran, that Allah and his prophets achieve domination necessarily. So the huge empire was established as a consequence of those conquests. Palestine too was a part of it. This is the political status of Palestine. However, its religious status, that since there are several places with which the Christians have a special relationship. There the place, the compound of the Temple of Solomon exists, which extends over several acres and which the Quran calls masjid e aqsa too. I had said that the incident of Isra, which was experienced by the Prophet, where he was shown several signs too, and along with it that trust, that is that dawah, the tawheed, and that testimony, this designation was also transferred to him, though this designation was handed over to him. However, the history of its erstwhile religious status ended with this, and now this was a city similar to any other city, this too was a region like other regions in the world. The way other regions were conquered, similarly, this too was conquered. In other regions, sometimes the conquest came through war and in some places followed out of an agreement. In some places, it resulted from laying down a siege. Here, I had said to you that out of the result of the siege, ultimately, the people of the city chose to hand over the city with a demand that if the Caliph of the Muslims comes down to this place and he himself offers his assurances to us, then we shall hand over the keys of the city to him. So it was taken over. So from the political perspective, the history starts with it. That is, the religious backdrop was made clear and then along with the Prophet, as a result of the campaigns of the companions, how it became a part of the Muslim empire, those details have been presented to you. At this instant, I would like to ask you a question. We shall proceed ahead with the discussion that you have done till now. When God Almighty selected the Arabian Peninsula and a nation was given the responsibility, the Ishmaelites, so now they are the chosen nation till the judgment day. However, when the Prophet is carrying out the process of completion of proof in the vicinity and as a result of it or on the basis of it, the companions are engaging in military campaigns. So why do these regions in the vicinity not have that status as that of the Arabian Peninsula? As in both the lands, the same prophet has carried out the work of completion of proof and the actions are being done with the help and guidance of God. Previous to this as well, Allah's decision differed for both regions. Palestine was given this status. Regarding its vicinities, the same law was stated in the Torah that they should be brought into subordination. That is the status that this area is special for God. It is the center for Tawheed. There cannot be another religion coexisting with it. It is not up to me. It is the information given by God Almighty. In the Quran it is stated, Yakuna dinu In this land, only the religion of God will remain. His domination and his hegemony will be there. There is no scope for another religion. And the Prophet has explicitly stated, La yajtameu dinan fi jaziratil arab. That is, in this Arabian Peninsula, there won't be two religions together. Hence, after this, what is to be done further with the newer regions that will be stated by God or the Prophet of God? So, he hasn't said anything of this kind. If you wish to see from a historical perspective, then the law that has been previously stated for Palestine, more or less the same has repeated here. That is there it was the command of God that the governments in the vicinities should be brought into subordination. They will be subjugated. Your domination would be established upon them. There hasn't been any manifestation of the law of completion of proof. And the reason given 
was that people through conquests would have domination today in one region and tomorrow in another region. So, a region which God has made special for himself, there if a rule is established and the governance of Israelites is established, will the governments in the vicinities leave it alone? So there it was made compulsory. Here, that way was not adopted. The prophet wrote letters, established the completion of proof. After that, those people, after the process of Itmami Hujjah, were given punishments according to the same laws and were given a lease in time. And as we know about the companions, and it has been stated in the Quran, that you must accept Islam. God Almighty will give you peace. And if you do not accept it, then you must brace for battle. Otherwise, after becoming subjugated and paying jizya, that is, hatta yutul jizyata amyadin wa hum sagirun, that is, live while accepting our domination. These were the conquests out of which this region became a part of the Muslim empire, or in other words, you say, which will be a better expression, that it became a part of the Sultanate of the Companions. Nothing more was done than this. Its benefit or its consequence was the same thing that was achieved here too, which had been achieved as a result of the campaigns in the vicinities of Palestine. It was not the present times. That is, the nation states are established, or out of some international considerations, there are some laws and certain things have been agreed upon. This wasn't the situation. Those were the times of the conquests. So, it was necessary for the security of the Arabian Peninsula that this dawah is taken to the people of the surrounding areas, and those areas should also come under the same process which has been adopted in the Arabian Peninsula itself. So the Prophet initiated this dawah was given from and on behalf of him. This process had started four years before his departure. The last brigade was also deployed by the Prophet. You are aware that Abu Bakr Siddiq was told to not continue with this campaign. So he said, how can I do this? To stop the brigade which has been prepared by the Prophet. Therefore, the Prophet initiated it and the narrations of the companions, which have reached us there with much clarity. They state that they have been deputed for this responsibility and that they have to carry out the process of completion of proof in all those regions. So now, Hazrat Umar made his conquest. After that, the Muslims have a rightful claim and title on this land. From this point, the political history of Muslims begin. What happened post this? That is as per the principle in which this happened, then the empires used to be established based on conquests. Based on the conquest, these lands would become yours to claim. These states would become your dominions. You would even gain control over the populace and the provinces that were formed with respect the relation to rulers and the ruled, as was the tradition of those times. Similarly, this huge empire was established, and all this happened only in a few years. That is, if you ever pick up a map and see, you will note the length and width of its expanse. It went on to the continents of Africa and Asia. The companions established it, and they acted upon the guidance of God the principle on which they established it that I have elaborated upon. Now, obviously, it had to be well secured and maintained. All these affairs were to take place similarly. So this was the empire which the companions handed over to the Muslims. The point started from this. Now, what remains? The political history remains. The dominance of the Muslims had been there in this region. You are aware that till the period of Umayyads, except for that small period when Abdullah bin Zubair had established his own empire in Hejaz, or set aside that period too when there had been a civil war and there were battles taking place between Hazrat Ali and Amir Muawiyah. That was definitely a period of chaos and confusion and which is referred to as Al-Fitnatul Kubra. In the same way, during the period of Abdullah bin Zubair, you cannot claim that there was one single Muslim empire. However, it wasn't long before when the Muslims were successfully able to restore their empire as a consolidated and united empire, and as glorious as it had been earlier. Its first manifestation was when there was a peace agreement with Hassan, 
and the Caliphate of Muawiyah remained in power for more or less 20 to 22 years, or even more than it. At that time, it was a united empire. Only one government was established over the whole land. Its executives were appointed in different territories. This situation prevailed. There were several revolts against the Umayyads. The revolt of the Abbasids was successful when the Abbasid Empire was established and they took over the power from the Umayyads. Then it was a group from the Umayyads who went on to Spain and established another empire there. Now two empires were established. However, there weren't many conflicts between them as these were quite distant from each other. That was actually established in Europe and the remaining area remained under the supervision of the Abbasids. You are aware that the eras of Harun and Mamun are periods of their zenith. That was the time when knowledge and wisdom reached their pinnacle. Many outstanding developments in civilization and culture were displayed. Now, when you read your history, or you feel proud of that history, so, in fact, it was the history of that period. That is, the first era was the period in which the Umayyads established a great empire. They revived the power of the Muslims, laid the foundation of art and sciences. The first generation of the champions of arts and sciences actually started getting ready during this period. However, it reached its excellence during this period of Abbasids. So, this empire continued, like according to the laws of God, weakness sets in. It has been said in the Quran that I bring forth different nations. And when large empires are established and their large dwellings become popular in the world, then they reach the point of terminal decline. So gradually, the weakness started setting in among them too. Therefore, to narrate the history of these weaknesses is not easy in so short a time. What were its aspects? One conclusion was that in that period in Cairo, or in other words in Egypt, the Fatimid Empire was established. Obviously the Abbasid Empire was already there. Like I said before this, the Umayyads established an empire in Spain. So this too was established in the same way. The different sultans that were there, they would in different places and up to a large extent made themselves independent. That is independent kingdoms would also get established within. In spite of all this, the Abbasid Caliph would be regarded as the symbol of Muslim power. Even if his political status weakened, it had assumed a religious status. These sultans too would frequent there, seek friendship, would pay respect and homage, and would, in a way, seek a certification for their own sovereignty. And that was sometimes seen as customary and sometimes as an inevitable reality was accepted. So this type of arrangement went on for centuries. Till the time, as you are aware, that in 1258 CE Halaku Khan destroyed the Baghdad Sultanate and raised it to dust. You remember the Marcia, a dirge or elegy, Asmara Hakba Wak Garkub Abarat Bar, Zamin Bar Zawale, Mulke Mustasim, Amiril Mominin. That is, the decline that came upon the empire of Amir il Mominin Mustasim. The skies have the right to shed tears of blood or rain blood on it. This was the situation that developed in 1258 CE. However, a very interesting point is that the tragedy took place in 1258 CE. And in 1261 CE, another Abbasid empire came into existence in Cairo. And it too assumed the status of a symbolic Khilafah. In different places, people were continuing their rule. When you read about Salahuddin, about the Mamluks and read about other such powers, all of them were in existence in their regions. However, a caliph of the Muslims still existed and it can be understood as a symbol of political unity. And that caliphate which was established in 1261 remained till 1517. That is not for a few days till the time the Ottomans reached their peak. They had emerged as a formidable seat of power. Their sultanate was established in far off places. Like I said, it were these different monarchs who would assume power in different places. So the biggest display of power was seen among them. And then you are aware that Sultan Salim caught hold of the same caliph 
and donned on that mantle of kilafa which he used to wear. So this happened in 1517 CE, and since then the Ottoman Empire was established. During this whole period, it is 1099 CE, in which the Crusaders' attack happened, and Palestine went on into the hands of Christians, and it remained with them till 1187 CE. There, a kind of Christian state was established in Jerusalem. It persisted for long. It remained even after 1187 CE. In 1187 CE, Salahuddin regained it. So do understand that in this complete history, which more or less extended till the year 1924 CE, when the Ottoman Empire ended. Then during this whole period, for a 100 years, that is if it was conquered in 1099 and taken back in 1187 CE, which makes it almost a century, Palestine remained with the Christians. So I have presented to you the historical background. Post this begins what you may call our era. That is what happened in this case. In this what happens is that weakness slowly and gradually reaches its ultimate peak till the time the First World War took place. And you are aware that at the beginning of the 19th century, a big change had taken place in the world. The Industrial Revolution had taken place. The Scientific Revolution was setting in. The Western nations, who till this time were confined to Europe, they were achieving excellence and making extraordinary progress. Contrary to them, the Muslim Sultanates, be it the Safavid Empire of Iran, or the Mughal Empire in India, or the Ottoman Empire itself, all were losing their sheen. The knowledge, the sciences, the civilizational peak, the superiority in arms and ammunitions, excellence in academics which the European nations had achieved, even its shadow was also found here any longer. This was actually that occasion after which the era of colonization began. It was the beginning of the 19th century when this period began, until Thereafter, the First World War took place. The Ottoman Empire decided in the First World War that they will side with the Axis powers, which are against the Allied powers. Germany was on the other end, so they would side with them. They were defeated in that war. So what now? Now the fact is, we were victors, and now we are vanquished. So the treatment meted out to conquered nations by victors, the same was done to us. All right, we exhaust our time here. We are learning in detail the issue of Palestine, the religious status of the land of Palestine. In today's discussion, we came to know about the time when the companions gained dominance of it, posted what has been the political history of the Muslims with regard to that land. We have reached the point when our era starts. Inshallah, we shall bring this under discussion. And then what treatment was given to us in the land of Palestine? Where did the conflict stand then and where does it stand today and how we can find a solution for it? We shall bring it under discussion in the next episode. Thank you very much for your time till now.